Hello again, I am Blunty, and this is everything I know about Pokemon Go so far. So, let's paint the picture for those of you not quite as passionate about Pikachu proceedings as some others are. There's a company called Niantic. They call themselves a startup, despite being born within the monstrous bowels of Google. And personally, I think it's ridiculous calling any appendage of the Google monster a startup, but whatever. Even if you've never heard their name before, you probably heard about the thing they did. It's called Ingress, which is buzzword described as an augmented reality, massively multiplayer, online location-based game. It had a bit of a science fiction backstory attached to it, but basically what you did was go to physical locations in the real world with your phone and capture things called portals, usually located at landmarks or other areas of community interest. You were in one of two factions, and you battled to capture or recapture the most portals and link them up to control large areas. It was a free app, which of course means the players themselves were the things being sold by Google to make the money. And this was done in a couple of different ways. Firstly, by direct advertising deals, where certain companies would pay Google for their physical locations to be portals, thus bringing people to them, hopefully some of whom would then patronize the business in question. And of course, by playing, you are also willingly allowing Google to almost constantly track your real-world location, your move movements, your habits, where you shop, how long you shopped there for, which restaurants you went to, and all of this personal data mining would also presumably be sold to third parties too. I never played it. The whole tracking thing really creeped me out, to be honest with you. But lots of people did, knowingly or in ignorance, allow Google to track their every move while baiting them with this so-called augmented reality game, with 13 million odd downloads of the Ingress app. And in Google's recent restructuring, Niantic is spinning out from the mothership, so now I guess it is a bit more like a real startup, but whatever. So what's all this got to do with Pokemon? Well, if you haven't heard, Nintendo and the Pokemon Company, which itself is owned by Nintendo and Game Freak, has thrown $20 million to Niantic, along with another $10 million to come if Niantic reached certain secret goals for the company and their staff of a mere 41 people to make a Pokemon augmented reality game called Pokemon Go. First announced earlier this year with a kind of aspirational teaser trailer thing, which I assure you bears absolutely zero resemblance to how the game will actually play and be experienced. But what we know so far is this. It'll be built upon what they learned with Ingress. It'll be a game that requires people to go out into the real world and search for wild Pokemon to capture, train, trade and battle, challenge other people to battle and compete in gym battles. All the core stuff Pokemon is supposed to have. It'll be a mobile game, of course, but it will also be paired with some hardware because, of course, why would you just sell a mobile game when you can con people into buying an inexplicably not round but teardrop-shaped Pokeball accessory? called the Pokemon Go Plus. Actually, I'm being a little bit facetious. While I wish it were round like a proper Pokeball, maybe that's just the Pokemon traditionalist in me, the shape is actually a hybrid between a Google-style map pin and a Pokeball. So, stupid looking and annoying, but strictly speaking, not inexplicable, really. But whatever. And which, as I understand it, won't be actually necessary for the game, but I'll bet you'll want to purchase one anyway, because it's actually kind of neat. It does do nice things, like enable you to play without having to constantly be whipping out your phone and checking the app. It's a thoughtful accessory, really, because it means you get to enjoy the world you're walking around in while hunting for Pokemon, instead of just plodding along, staring vacantly into your phone, like far too many people already do when walking around the world these days. The Pokemon Go Plus connects to your phone, and the app, presumably via low-power Bluetooth, and it'll buzz or vibrate and flash a multicolor LED when you're near something to interact with relevant to the game. It's also a neat idea for younger kids playing, because it means they won't have to be carrying around an expensive and comparatively delicate smart device all of the time. Instead, a parent can carry that and just let the kid wear the device. Once an alert happens, they can even press a button in a certain sequence, perhaps with some sort of pattern matching mini game with the lights or something, I don't know, to capture the Pokemon and then later view it on the phone or tablet, playing together with their parent. Sounds lovely, really? And in an effort to make the game work for people in big cities as well as those in small towns and such, where there's obviously going to be far fewer active players, they'll be doing stuff like asynchronous play. How precisely this is going to work, they haven't really elaborated on yet, but it's nice to know they are thinking about people who don't live in densely populated areas. 
It's been said that one of their key goals is to make sure any player can walk out of the house and within five minutes find a wild Pokemon and be doing stuff and things. But Pokemon gyms will be rarer, requiring more active effort to get to in order to train and level up there. And as you may imagine, or at least hope, they'll be linking Pokemon types to specific locations. Water Pokemon near bodies of water, obviously. Grass types in, I don't know, parks or something. And if it wasn't Pokemon and thus required to be kiddie friendly, I'd like to imagine ghost types would only be found in pubs because you know spirits ha <laughs> ha pun it's also easy to imagine that local time of day will come into play with like zubats coming out when it's dark and endless zigzagoon armies during your every waking moment of the day <laughs> and of course there'll be rare pokemon in only a few special places and events and things and it's this kind of location mechanic that makes things start to get really interesting as far as i'm concerned it means trading pokemon will be even more vital than ever before again it's easy to imagine that a bit like the pavilion butterfly patterns certain pokemon may only be able to be encountered in the wild in certain countries or even states within those countries i like to think that perhaps kangaskhan as a kangaroo inspired pokemon would be exclusive to australia Australian soil, for instance, along with all of the snakes and all of the spiders and every last one of the poison types, of course. Because, <laughs> you know, come to Australia, you just might accidentally get killed. There will also be location and time specific special events and instances, much like in any MMORPG worth its salt. For instance, the teaser trailer showed a big crowd of people all teaming up to battle the legendary Mew 2. There'll also be teams to join, a concept already well established in Pokemon lore, though not really explored properly in the games from a player's point of view. So far in the main RPG series you can battle against the likes of Team Rocket or Team Aqua, but you can't join them. But in Pokemon Go, you can be in a team of your own. Nothing yet has been said on the matter of if players can form their own teams, or guilds as it were, or if we'll be limited to making a choice between dictated teams, like in Ingress. Given Nintendo's control freak tendencies, I'd predict the latter. Otherwise, you just know we'll end up with some zero self-control morons calling themselves uh, Team Big Penis Wang Titties or Team Hitler Had Some Good Ideas and a Cool Moustache. You know, those people just have to ruin it for everybody. This is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> but whatever. It's also unclear yet as to if users can set up their own gyms, or if the existing gyms will be pure AI, or based around real people's teams like the last person to beat them or something, or even simply be real people. Excitingly, this will be the very first Pokemon game to have a living, breathing, server-based world which goes on even when you're not actively playing. Again, more like a traditional MMO. In fact, it's exactly what an MMO is. <laughs> it'll be free to play, except for that wrist device thingy you want to buy. Oh, and it'll have in-app purchases. Of course it will. Though what those will be and how much they'll cost is as yet undisclosed. It's not hard to imagine, though, things like special Pokeballs and rare candies and TMs and HMs and buff items like potions and elixirs and other established Pokemon consumables and status effects cures will all be likely microtransaction fodder. I just really hope they don't go overboard with it. I just have a little bit of self-control, please. John Hank, chief executive of Niantic, is on record as saying that he thinks it can be bigger than World of Warcraft. He didn't really specify if he means when World of Warcraft was at its peak, or the now rapidly dwindling numbers of active players today. Either way, man, wouldn't it be freaking amazing for that to happen? There is no release date yet, aside from sometime in 2016, but if I had to take a guess, I would say it'd either be late in February, that seems kind of soon though, we don't know how far along in development they really are, but that will time in with the celebration of Pokemon's 20th anniversary, alongside the 3DS virtual console releases of the original games, or it will probably be at Pokemon's traditional November-ish pre-Christmas time thing to capitalise on that. And to bring us back to the points I started making at the beginning of the video, we don't yet know anything about what the terms of use will be either, specifically if any location data mining will be done. I imagine it'll be legally tricky considering it is a game focused at kids, and privacy advocate groups may lose all of their shit if this thing actively and continuously tracks the location of potentially millions of kids and then sells that information to advertisers and whatnot. 
I would expect a lot of clickbaity alarmist headlined articles about that stuff, though, as obviously it'll be a very hot button topic once the tech retarded mainstream media trip across the fact or two about how games like this actually have to work. And all that's aside from us adults, uncomfortable with the idea of having our locations tracked and sold, but very excited by this new Pokemon gameplay experience. I have little doubt that Pokemon Go will be a very big success. Pokemon, even with Yoko Watch snipping at its 20-year-old heels, is an incredibly strong brand still. Personally, I don't know of many IPs that could get me this excited about this type of game. Ingress certainly bounced right off my give a shit meter and I can't imagine anything like a WoW-style swords and sorcery theme would get me hyped either. But Pokemon? Hell yeah. A game that I've been playing for nearly two decades. A game world and lore with such charm and such fun. It's as shallow or as deep as any player wants to pull from it. It's equally as fun for newbies and little kids as it is for the neckbeardiest basement dwelling obsessives out there. Pokemon really is something amazingly special and nothing else out there has quite done what it has done. And it will, I suspect, be the first MMORPG that I ever really get into. I have tried some of the others, but none of them have really got their claws into me. And I expect it will also be the first of many such augmented reality MMO games. And yes, I know it's not the first, but I think it'll be the first to be big. Just like there were endless Pokemon RPG knockoffs once that got big, even though Pokemon RPG games were far from the first RPG games of similar styles. Ingress was hardly a sophisticated game. It was an interesting gimmick, and it had a loose story wrapped around it to try and sew things together. And it made a handy data mining tool, I'm sure. But Pokemon Go will probably be the first truly successful, rich experience game of this type. Pokemon players have been literally begging Nintendo for a mobile phone-based Pokemon RPG game ever since gaming on mobile phones became even remotely practical. And the potential market is even bigger than the core RPG games because, of course, far more people have phones than 3DSs. And, of course, it'll be free to play, so you'll be able to try it with no risk, won't you? It's confirmed for iOS and Android, but if you're one of those, you know, 18 people out there using a Windows phone... <laughs> Windows phones. I wouldn't hold your breath. But then again, what's the likelihood of anyone using a Windows phone? Can figure out YouTube enough to even have watched this video anyway. <laughs> I laugh at you, Windows phone users. Come at me, bro. <laughs> Nintendo, as a company, is on my shit list these days for many reasons. I've made no secret about this. But Pokemon is unequivocally a weakness which they are still able to fully exploit in me. I will play this game. I will be grouchy and paranoid about them tracking my location. I will buy the melted Pokeball looking thingy. And I will try very hard not to fall into the vile trap of in-app purchases. Because once you pop, you can't stop. They're like freaking Pringles. I also have a bit of an idea about how to live Twitch stream Pokemon Go gameplay while out in the wild of the world, which might be fun, if I can get it to work worth a damn. So, what about you? Excited? Gonna play it? Gonna spend money on it? Gonna buy the little wrist strap thingy? How do you feel about the privacy issues here? If you're a parent especially, do you trust these companies with the real-time location tracking of your kid being squirted up to computers you don't control, owned or rented by private companies, located who knows where, which will inevitably sooner or later be targeted by hackers either for profit or just because they can so if you have something to say about any of this and i know you do do the thing with the buttons and the box with which you type in but never ever spell check in <laughs> thanks for watching i am blunty and i will catch you next time i will catch you all next time get, get catch them all wait i should have thought about how to tie that my sign off into the pokemon catchphrase thing